Is there any policemen in? <laughs> bastards. <laughs> I hate them bastards, I hate them bastards. <laughs> the bummers, they just, they, they've just stopped me coming here and he said, he pulled in and he said you was doing a hundred mile an hour, why didn't you stop when I flashed the blue light? I said, well, my wife had just left me and gone and lived with the policeman and I thought you was bringing her back. <laughs> Sunrise, I've been born with. I went in to see a clairvoyant. She's been reading me future. Christ. <laughs> and we got one each side of the table looking in the crystal ball. <laughs> she said, You won't be having any more children. And when I got up to go, I nudged the table and the ball rolled off and crushed me knacker. <laughs> said I got some bad news for you but I got some good news as well <laughs> he said what's the bad news he said you got AIDS and you're going to be dead within three weeks <laughs> he said what's the good news he said you also got Alzheimer's disease and when you get home you'll have forgot all about it <laughs> I went in the shop, forget a bunch of flowers for my wife. I said, I'll have a bunch of flowers. She said, this is not a flower shop, it's a circumcision clinic. <laughs> I said, you got flowers in the window? She said, what do you suggest I put in the window? I hate my bloody wife. I look at the tits on you there. <laughs> Should see the tits on her. But... My wife used to have big tits, but the kids had them. <laughs> well, she still got big ones, but they flop down like yours. <laughs> You got a hairy chest as well. <laughs> no kidding, your cleavage is deeper than I thought. I, I can see your family here. I can see your family. Boys, come and have a look at this. Ginger family, and the <laughs> But I, I met my missus on the beach at Newquay. I met her on the beach at Newquay. On the beach at Newquay, I met my wife on the beach at Newquay. <laughs> I had to go down and tell her to move her fat ass, the tide is waiting to come in. <laughs> but 
she she was feeding the seagulls when I got there. She's feeding the seagulls, you know. She's breastfeeding, you know. And last week was our 25th wedding anniversary, and she said, I want to go back to the hotel and relive our honeymoon. Christ. <laughs> And she came out of the bathroom with a black see-through vest on. <laughs> I said, surely to Christ, I haven't got to poke that, have I? <laughs> she said, Jeffro, she said, what was what was you thinking 25 years ago when I walked out of that bathroom? What was you thinking then? I said, I, I was thinking then, when they get you in the bed, they're going to suck your tits till they suck your brains right there. And she said, what are you thinking now? I said, I'm thinking now, what a bloody good job I must have done. <laughs> but for 25 years, I've been trying to give her a portion in doggy fashion for 25 years, and I've only now talked her into having the portion doggy fashion. But the condition she's made is that I'm not allowed to bark. <laughs> And we do it in a street where nobody don't know her. <laughs> but I've, I've told her if we get hanged up, don't go dragging me past my mother's place. <laughs> Made in Cornwall called Denzel Pemberthy. You. you shouldn't laugh at Denzel because he won wanted as a child. He won wanted as a child. His mother wanted an abortion, but the doctor said, seeing he started school, maybe too late. What'd you say? Piss off, go on, piss off, you bastard. It's the Jehovah's Witnesses, has got it. <laughs> they, they, they asked Denzel if he'd be a Jehovah's Witness. He said, I've never even seen a bloody accident. <laughs> the bloody fool. He went on the building site, there's a bloody great chimney, and the boss said, what would you want to paint that 80-foot chimney? He said, an 80-foot brush. <laughs> but see, when we got married, we married two sisters, see, and we, we got, it was a joint wedding and honeymoon, and we went on honeymoon. Well, we got in the hotel, well, just like you do. <laughs> that won't frighten me, I used to be a welder. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Rowe, he said, I bet on our, on our honeymoon night I shall give her a portion more often than you do. I said, you won't beat me giving portions for Christ's sake. <laughs> I said, they used to call me the mad muffer from Mousel for Christ's sake. Well, he said, what we'll do is we'll have a piece of chalk off the dartboard and every time you split her whiskers... <laughs> put the mark on the headboard and we'll have a count up in the morning. I said, right, I said, you're bloody on, I said. Well, I went to bed and give her a portion, well, just like you do. 
Go, I put up one, that was bloody good. One of that was bloody good. One was bloody good. <laughs> then about half past two, I woke up and split her whiskers again. Half past two. This is in the morning, half past two. I give her another one. She didn't wake up not that time. I woke up in the morning, the sun was shining, and I give her another one in the morning. Well, that was three. That was plenty good. Three was plenty good. One that plenty good. But half past eight, Denzel come in my bedroom on his hands and knees, and he looked at the head of the bed. He said, you bastard. He said, 111, you beat me, be one.